heart. Those are the seven attributes of a Christian character that we have already dealt with. Today, I want to deal with number eight. And if you would, turn with me to the book of Hebrew. The book of Hebrew, chapter 13, verse 8. It is going to give us a picture of our next Christian attribute or Christ-like attribute. Because we are building a Christ-like character. Amen? We have it, say amen. Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Can I read it for the Message Bible to give us an even a more deeper understanding? The Message Bible, read it verse 7 and 8. Appreciate your pastoral leaders who gave you the Word of God. Take a good look at the way they live and let their faithfulness instruct you as well as their truthfulness. There should be a consist consistency that runs through us all. For Jesus doesn't change yesterday, today, tomorrow. He always, he's always totally himself. He's always totally himself. I know the scripture has been used to describe that the blessings of God are the same. That Jesus, if he blessed them in the previous day, will bless you today and tomorrow. Yes, that is how this scripture has been traditionally used. But this morning, may I use it in a different way as I show you the eight attribute of a Christ-like character. For our eighth attribute of a Christ-like character is transparency. Transparency. Or being transparent 24-7. Or if I just want to just break it down, I'm just going to say, just be a real. Just be a real. Now some of you have a puzzled look on your face because you're trying to figure out, Pastor, how are you getting transparency out of the scripture? I don't quite understand it, I know, but just follow me for a few minutes and I will take you there. The Bible declares that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. In other words, the Bible is saying that he has always been himself. Uh -huh. He has no fronts, he has no pretense. He doesn't perpetrate. He has always been himself. He's like Flip Wilson. When I grew up, I looked at Flip Wilson. And Flip Wilson, before there was a Medea, there was Flip Wilson. Yes. Some of y'all, that's too old for me, I know. But before there was a Medea, there was Flip Wilson. And there was, um, there was, her name was Geraldine. Geraldine. And Geraldine would say, what you see is what you get. Uh -huh. And may I tell you what Jesus is saying, what you see is what you get. That's right. He was the same 24 7, whether he was with the disciples, whether he was with the Pharisees, whether he was in prayer. He was always the same. He was transparent. He was just real. Yes. And whether you liked his doctrine during that time or whether you like his doctrine now, it has not changed. He has just been real. And if we're going to have Christ like character, then we need just to be real. We need to just be transparent. Whether your transparency has some good things or whether it has some bad things, at least be real about it because even if there's some things that you I may not like, at least because you're real, I know who you are. Yes. And you know amen. Yes. 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 At least there's some things I know about you, so if you just be real. For some of you, if you heard the pastor said something, you'd be like, no, he didn't say that. But some of y'all would shake your head and say, yeah, yeah, he, uh, yeah, praise God, pastor, he said it. Hopefully I'm real enough to know, real enough to you that even if it's something that may not be possible, you just shake your head and say, just keep praying for him. That, yeah, he said that, he, that's him, he said it. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. And we have to be real in our character because if we're going to win others, uh -huh. 
to Christ. We got to be transparent. Yes. If we're going to win others to Christ, we got to be real. Yes. And they are, they very quickly realize when we're not real. Uh-huh. They very quickly realize when we're perpetrated. They very quickly realize when we're not all that we say we're going to be. So if I'm going to have Christ-like character, I just need to be real. Yes. I need to be transparent. Well, Pastor, I don't want to be transparent because they may see something that I, that's in me that I don't like. That's true. But what are you going to deal with it if somebody see it? Amen. That's oh, right. That's amen. 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 You saying amen this morning. When are you, until you are real about it, you're not going to change it. That's right. Because you're usually even lying to yourself about the situation. Well. But Christ, in all that he did, was transparent. Said what he had to say, did what he had to do. And once you saw him one day, you saw him the same the other day. And the world is looking for Christians who are real. Yes. Not looking for a bunch of super saints, not looking for those who are always yelling hallelujah, glory to God. Looking for somebody who's real. And sometimes, yes, yeah, sometimes I don't feel like praying. Yes, yeah, sometimes I don't feel like doing all that I'm supposed to do. I still do it, but I don't feel like doing it. I feel like throwing in the towel sometimes. I yes. feel like giving up sometimes. I don't want somebody who's always on the mountain because if you're always on the mountain, you don't know what the valley is like. If you're always on the mountain, you don't know the stakes that's in the valley. You don't know everything that's in the valley. Because you really can't help me because you can't tell me how to maneuver in the valley because you just spent too much time on the mountaintop. But I need somebody who's real, that's been on the mountaintop, that's been in the valley, and been up and side up and up the mountain. That knows the heart shift of climbing the mountain. Yes, yes, yes. And the world is not looking for somebody who got it going on. They're looking for somebody, are you making it? And if you're making it despite of what you're going through, can you tell me your secret? Go ahead, sir. Because the church has sold us, how can I say it? They have sold us an iceberg in the desert. <laughs> the church has sold us an iceberg in the desert. What you mean, Pastor? The church has perpetrated that once you get saved, it's just going to be, everything's going to be all right, and you're never going to get hurt, and you're never going to have any problems, and everybody in the church is going to love you, and there's not going to be no issues, and you, once you get saved, it's just going to be all, all right. And you get in church, and sometimes there's more hell in church than it was when you wanted in church. And then you're trying to think of, you're trying to think, well, hold up, what, 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 what's, what's the problem? What, you mean, I, I thought there would be a change once I got in church. I thought there would be something different. Yes, the difference is that Christ is on your side, and he'll take you through every valley, and he'll take you through every river, cross every river. He'll help you through it all. But he never said that you were going to be in a rose garden. Yes. And guess what? If he did tell you, he didn't leave out that there's thorns in a rose garden. A rose is beautiful, but if you pick it up the wrong way, you're going to hit the thorns on the rose. So it's not that as saints we don't go through nothing. It's not that saints we don't go through tribulation and trials. But what it is is how we go through. Yes. And the church is not, has been scared to show us that yes, we go through thinking that we won't want to come to Christ. But if Christ, if he told me taste and see, it's not my job as the church. To get you to come to him. Uh -huh. All I need to do is introduce you to him. I don't have to perpetrate this like this. I don't have to perpetrate this like this because he'll take care of it himself. Yes. He'll take care of himself. And he's transparent. He's real. Yes, he is. Church is the one that sold us the iceberg in the desert and when we live looking for the water, it won't there. Because how can the iceberg survive? In the desert. And they told you you're not going to go through there. Everything's going to be all right. Oh, yeah, just go, just go worship. Did that give you the reality of church? And because it did not give you the reality of church, when you got hurt, you left. Yes. When you got hurt, you stopped coming. When you got hurt, it took you a long time to get back to the place where you were because you were not told the reality. You were told you had a crystal present under the tree, but you never got the present. Uh. You told you were getting this, but you never got it. Well, Christ is transparent. He lets you know there are some things you're going to go through. And if you're going to have Christ-like 
have character, you need to be transparent. I don't want no, I don't want everybody to know what I'm going through. How can somebody get delivered if they don't know? And what's the problem with them knowing if God is the one that's going to bring you out? If God is the one that's going to bring you out. Transparent, being real. Being real. This is not something I pat myself on the back. This is just who I am. But you can talk to both of my brother laws and just tell you the same way I am right here is the same way I am when I'm talking to them. I don't change. I don't change. That's why they're shaking their heads about I don't change. Same way he is in it, same way he is. He talk the same way, act the same way. And yeah, I'm just as crazy up here with them and down there. And it's the same way. They want to know, are you real? Yeah. Because if you're not real, you can't help me. Right. And if you're going to be like Christ, you got to be real. Yes. You got to be real. You got to be transparent. Can I tell you what Jesus said about those who aren't real? Go with me to the Gospel according to St. Matthew. The Gospel according to St. Matthew. The 23rd verse. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 23rd verse, beginning at the 20, I mean the 23rd chapter, I'm sorry, beginning at the 25th verse. Matthew 23 and 25. When you have it, say amen. amen. Listen to what Jesus talks about for those who are not real. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make, your, you make clay the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortions and excess. Thy blind Pharisees, clean first which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto white sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead man bones and of all uncleanliness. Even so, you are outwardly appear righteous unto man, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Mm. Revelation says, either be, I want that you were either to be hot or cold, because if you're lukewarm, I will spill you or throw you up or vomit you out of my mouth. Mm. Why? Because you make me sick. Well, God would rather you be real. Either be a real sinner or be a real saint. Be one or the other. Don't be in the middle. That's right. God will deal with you as a real sinner or he'll deal with you as a real saint. But if you're in the middle, you're like an undone cake. Then when I eat you, I throw, I throw you back up because there's nothing good about you. God says, I rather you be high or I rather you be cold. If you don't want to serve it, just say you don't want to serve it. If you want to serve it, then serve it. Be one or the other. But don't be in the middle. My God. Come on, come on. Don't be in the middle because in the middle, I can't help you. In the middle, I can't deliver you. In the middle, I can't set you free. And in the middle, you are just causing other people to fall. Yes. Because they're looking at you in the middle. I'm trying to figure out if that's what Christianity is, then perhaps I don't know. Wow. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Can I read it from the Amplified Bible? The same verse from the Amplified Bible. Listen to what the Amplified Bible says. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, pretenders, hypocrites, for you are clean, for you clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but within are full of extortion, praise, for plunderers, and gravely self-indulgence. You blind Pharisees first clean the inside of the cup and of the plate so that the outside may be clean also. Woe to you scribes and Pharisees, pretenders, hypocrites, for you are like tombs that have been whitewashed 
which look beautiful on the outside, but the inside are full of dead man bones and everything impure. Just so you also outwardly seem to be people to be just and upright, but inside are full of pretense and lawlessness and iniquity. Yes, sir. You said you look good on the inside. You pretenders. You pretend to be one way. You actors. I should have brought my trophies today. Pass out some Oscars. Because God would just rather you be real. If you have an issue, just be real with him. If you don't have an issue, just be real with him. Because when you be real with him, he can help you. But he cannot help you if you're never real with him. And you're perpetrating one thing because you think it looks good, but you are not maintaining that when you are outside of God's house. Let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 3 and 5. 2 Timothy 3 and 5. We have a statement. Second Timothy 3 and 5. Are you there? Almost. Very familiar passage of scripture. Second Timothy 3 and 5. Listen to what it says. King James Version. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such Turn away. Keep your hand right there as I read it from the New Living Translation. Listen to what the New Living Translation says. They will act religious. They will act religious. But they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. If we're going to be like Christ, we just got to be real. Real with our issues. Real with our problems. Real where we are. Yes, all of us are not where we want to be in Christ. But you're still growing. At least you're not where you were. You made some growth. Celebrate your growth. Work on your improvement. You got to be like the one minute manager. The one minute manager says, I'm going to give you one minute of praise, one minute of cap of, of criticism. Then we're going to, one minute, we're going to analyze what we need to improve. And so you got to, when you're, when you're in Christ, you got to be like that. For improvements, you got to take that one minute and celebrate. And when you don't do well, you got to take that one minute and say, okay, I didn't do that well. And then take the one minute and analyze, where do I go from here? Because none of them can you stay for a long period of time. You cannot stay in the celebration because the celebration will give you a falsehood that there's no more growth. You got to celebrate because you can't stay there. You can't stay in the criticism, the constructive criticism, because it makes you feel like you ain't never growing. So you got to recognize that there's some issues, but don't stay there. And you cannot stay in just analyzing where you need to grow because then you'll write it down, but you never step into and do it. Well, each one needs this time period, but you can't stay there because if you stay there, you won't grow. My God, that's good teaching. Yes. Yes. So you celebrate when you do well. You get down on yourself when you don't. And then you examine and say, where do I go from here? Proverbs puts it this way, a righteous man falls seven times. The significance of that is that if he fails seven times, he must have got up six. Yes. Because it could have never failed seven times if he never got up. And so God wants us to be real about who we are so he can take us to a higher place in him. Right, right. So what is God saying to us today? He said that we're going to have true Christ-like character. First, we got to stop perpetrating. Yes. Second, we got to stop being imposters. Uh -huh. Thirdly, we got, thirdly, we got to stop in impersonating people. Go ahead, sir. And fourthly, we need to take off the makeup of life and show who we really are. Yes. Yes, some women don't want to come out the house until they make sure everything is in the right place. 
But brothers, if you're going to marry somebody, make sure you see them without the makeup. Yes. Oh, okay, get no help. Yes. Because you got to wake up that morning. They're not going to have the rules on. They're not going to have the eyeliner on. And the hair is not going to be in place. So if you can't take them like that, then all you can take is them looking beautiful. Then that's not the one you need to marry. Marriage 101. <laughs> and so what God is saying, I need you to take off the makeup of life and show me who you really are. Yes, sir. Because until you show me who you really are, I can't help you. Uh -huh. I can't help you. When you go to Macy's or J.C. Penney's and they're doing a makeover, they don't ask you to come all made up. They want you to come how you are so they can see what imperfections you have so they can correct it. You don't go there already got it together because they'll be like, why well, you come to us? You already got it together. But you come there how you are so they can begin to work on it. God said, I don't need you all made up. That's right. I don't need you all made up. And this is where this comes in. I don't want to go to church until I get right. God said, you make them get right out there by yourself. That's right. That's the makeup of life. You don't want to come to church. I don't want them to see me like this. I don't want them to know I'm like this. I don't want them to see me like this. Well, can I tell you something? The way you are, some of us already been. So you ain't showing us nothing we haven't seen. That's right. Amen. And half of us been worse off than what you are. So you ain't really doing nothing new. And when you come in, we already know because we've been there, you got to make up a life on and try to figure out if you just take it off, God will do something for you. Yes, sir. And the biggest lie that devil ever told somebody, I got to get right first. I got to get right first before I can come to church. You can't get right without church. Amen. You can't get right without God. Amen. You need him to get to the place where you need to get to. So he says, take off the makeup of life. Show me who you really are. Yes. So that, so that I can give you what I need to give you. God says, just be real. Yes. That's all. Just be real. Yes. I can't deal with you no other way, but you being real. Because if you be real, then I take you to places and do things for you. Just be real. Let me deal with my ninth attribute of a Christian character, then I'm out. The ninth attribute of a Christian character, go with me to the Old Testament, the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel, chapter 6. And we want to begin at the second verse. I know some of you are saying, Pastor, how are we going to find Christ-like character in the Old Testament? I'm going to show you. The book of Daniel, chapter 2. I'm sorry, chapter 6, verse 2. Daniel 6 and 2. When you have it, say amen. You need me to wait on you, say wait on me. Daniel chapter 6 verse 2 listen to what it says over these three presidents of whom Daniel was the first that the princess might give an account to them and the king should have no damage then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was found in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm Verse 3, not going to go to verse 4. Verse 3 talks about an excellent spirit or a spirit of excellence. Yes. That's our ninth attribute. Our ninth attribute. Ex excellent or means being very good or extremely good. And if you're going to have a, if you're going to be Christ-like, you have to have the spirit of excellence. Yes. What does that mean? That means I can't get grow ready. Uh, can't get no help in this house. Yes, sir. 
That means I got to do it to the best of my ability at the time I'm doing it. I can't have step with it. That's why one of our operating principles here at LLWC and for our new partners, I got to go over that with you, but one of our operating principles is excellence. And it states our service to God and his people would be the very best. And we will always operate in excellence. That means we will always do it very good. Amen. And if we can't do it very good, we won't do it at all. Because I don't want to do something badly and say we did it and then it doesn't look good. That's right. And too many times in church, we just want to say we did it. All right. Uh, well, we did do it. You did do it, but it wasn't done in excellence. That's right. It's not about the number, but only two people showed up. That if we had waited and did it in excellence, it would have been so much better. It would have been your best. If we got to rush it and we can't do it, then rather not do it than to do it poorly. Do it in excellence. And everything Christ did was in excellence. Even when he had three loaves of bread and two fish, he said, sit, sit, sit the people down, sit the men down. I'm going to do this thing right. How did he do it right? He said, pick up the leftovers. He said, we ain't even going to litter. We're going to feed them and pick up the leftovers. We're going to do it right. So when you come behind us, you're not going to say, that church did that, and I don't want church people to come here, and I don't want them to do that, because they always leave them, and they always do this all go. We're going to do it in excellence. So not only must we do it in excellence as a body, we must do it in excellence as individuals. Do people dread you coming? Don't ask me, don't ask me. Do, do they drag you coming because they know it ain't going to be done right? Do they say, no, I'm going to do it myself? And they know they can't do it as good as you do it, but they don't want you to do it because they know you're not going to do a good job. All right. No. All right. And they just do it themselves because at least they know it's going to be done the best way they can. Yes, sir. Is that how we're supposed to be as Christians? Christ, life, character? Everything Christ did was in excellence. That's right. Even when he got mad and overturned, overturned the tables, he did it in excellence. Because yeah. he ain't hit nobody with the whip, but he threw it so much that they wouldn't run him. We're going to be Christ-like, we have to do it in excellence. And for some of us, that's a mind change. For some of us, that's a mind change. Because we've been used to just doing status quo. Uh-huh. Just barely enough to get by. And I, I, I have to, I, I really have to apologize because church hood has taught us that, you know, we could just do enough to get barely by. We'd be, we'd be all right. But Christians didn't teach us that. Because Christ said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Yes, more abundantly means extremely good. Well, we just, you know, if we just get 10, we'll be okay. No, let me shoot for the stars. If I miss the stars, maybe I land on the moon. My God. Right. But if I never shoot for it, I never attain anything. And Christ was not like that. He has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power of love and a sound mind. Yes. So if you're too scared to do it, step back, build your confidence, and then do it. But do it in excellence. Yes. I'm reminded of the story as we're in the clothes. Peter and John had healed the man at the gate of beautiful. And they took him and put him in jail. And they brought him before the Pharisees, brought him before the high educated people who knew everything about church had it all going on. Yes, sir. And they began to talk and speak. And they said, hold up, wait a minute, move back for a minute. And they began to talk to themselves and said, hold up. We know these are ignorant men. In other words, they, 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 don't, they don't have all the education that we have. They don't have it going on like we have it going on. But yet, there's something special about them. Right. Although we know they're ignorant men, they don't talk like 
in the room. And I know, although we know they don't have all this education that we have, and they don't know how to do it like we do in the church, they don't talk like that. And the Bible said they recognize that they have been with Jesus. The spirit of excellence that was on Jesus came upon them. You say, oh, the pastor, why are you telling me this? Because it ain't all, all about what you know. It ain't all about what you know. It's about the effort that you're going to put behind it. Because a whole lot of people know a whole lot of stuff, but don't put no effort behind it. And I would have somebody who don't know what they're doing that's going to give me 100%. They have somebody who know what they're going through and going to have to. But I can always go on the internet and get the how to do. Oh my God. Glad to tell them. If I got 10 brothers that are going to help me do it, give me the all. Give me those 10. Don't give me 100 to know how to do it. They're going to have to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what God is saying. Everything I do, I want to do it in excellence. When we look over almost two years that we've been as a body of believers, November will be two years. And you look at the things we've done. Everybody looks back and says, well, how many members you got? How many partners you got? Well, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. How many partners? You do like, like you a mega church. No, we just do it in excellence. And I can take 50 in excellence and make it look like it's a mega church. And take a mega church with 1,000 who don't do it with excellence and make them look like they got 50. And that's why when we do things, they look back and say, well, how many, how can y'all? Because when we do it, we do it with excellence. Yes. And excellence will make you look bigger than you really are. Yes. Excellence will make you look, it will cast a shadow. They're just trying to figure out how you cast in that shadow. That's what happened with Peter and John. They cast a shadow, and the Pharisees and Pharisees knew they didn't have the education to cast that shadow. They didn't have the experience to cast that shadow. But the one thing they recognize is they have been with Jesus. And we got to stop letting what we think we don't know stop us from working in excellence. Working in excellence and being real. Go hand in hand in building Christ-like character. And if you'll be real, if you'll be real, if you work in excellence, if you be real, and if you work in excellence, then you begin to grow in Christ like you never grown before. Rest in your feet all over the building.